the beach and I saw everyone running towards this guy. And I went out there too and um, this guy was getting pulled out of the water with a big shark bike. It is a screen straight out of the movie Jaws. Several people attacked by a shark on the Texas Gulf Coast. What the family of one victim is saying about this ordeal. We have a poll right now asking if it's going to change your plans for heading to the coast this weekend. But Justin saying the Texas coast right now may not be a good place to be this weekend when considering barrel. He's going to have updates for us in just a bit. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hey there, good morning. It is 6 a.m. on your Friday, July 5th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. I hope everyone had a good 4th of July. Patty, I, had, I heard lots of fireworks. I heard, I heard nothing. I was sound asleep. Good for you. <laughs> Did you get to partake in any of the eating, the hot dogs, the hamburgers, any no, of that good um, 4th of July stuff? My partaking was hearing all my neighbors enjoy setting off fireworks on my street. Oh. But I'm glad everyone celebrated safely. Yes, it's always uh, a good. Yeah, yeah, and Justin, you have some firework pictures yeah. behind you. Yeah, this is in by Skywatcher and Oscar. This was out at uh, the club at Sonterra, but beautiful shot. Uh, you know, they're all over town. There was a ton of festivities yesterday, and that's uh, it's a great shot. Oscar always doing a good job. He says, uh, big bada boom, club <laughs> at Sonterra. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Uh, yes, uh, as we look outside right now, 79 degrees here in San Antonio. It's a warm morning, very consistent temperatures here. We're going to have one more scorcher of a day uh, where we're up near 100. 99 is what we're shooting for this afternoon with a feels like number anywhere between 100 and 105. This has been the status quo, right? Uh, well, things finally start to change tomorrow. We get some rain back in the forecast. Weak frontal battery moves in, kicks up some showers and storms. Then, of course, uh, we're going to turn our focus to barrel, which right now is making landfall. Uh, near Cancun or just south of Cancun near Playa de Carmen. Uh, winds are at 110 miles per hour. Still category two. It weakens today, but where does it go next? There are some changes to that path, and I think some changes for our forecast, some good, some bad. We'll talk about it coming up here in just a couple minutes. Uh, but we got to look at roads this morning, and so construction is not going on. There's no but, grasses, but uh, but yes, uh -oh. uh, there's a but there. Um, uh -oh. Yeah, and just like that, you know what? I've had a couple of incidents pop up over the past 10, 15 minutes or so ago. So 90 eastbound right here, Leon Creek, you are seeing this vehicle off to the side of the road. It was being uh, reported as an accident uh, a little while ago, but uh, that's not the only activity taking place on 90 right now. We also have over here by Medio Creek. Uh, this is going to be 90 right there. This is going to be past 410, so right between uh, 410 and and uh, 1604. So the other, the other incident there on 90 eastbound, that one is uh, before you get past 410. So a couple different things taking place on Highway 90 right now on the west side of town. Let's go ahead and check in with photojournalist Alex Gomez, and I believe he was making his way over to 90. Alex, uh, what's the latest that you could tell us out there? Well, there is another area with a, dis a stalled vehicle on 410 and military, but as soon as I approached the scene, Textile Heroes was already leaving. So it looks like they were able to clear it. So 410 and military is back in action. I'm over here on the west side on 90 eastbound, close to uh, 151. Not seeing too much of a slowdown here, but uh, I'll let you know um, if that changes. And you know what? I'm actually coming up to that incident that you were talking about a little bit earlier. So it's going to be right there on that right shoulder. Uh, that accident, we have two units there. So again, low, uh, low volume, so it's not impacting and we're not seeing a major delay. But again, it's all gonna be taking place right there on that right shoulder, RJ. Okay, thank you very much, Alex. Yeah, some real-time traffic updates right there on the roads as we take a look at our maps. The only other things we're following right now, 410 West Military have an incident right there, a stalled vehicle, and then by the San Antonio Airport, this is going to be 410 West by Broadway, uh, have a stalled vehicle there as well. So we will continue to keep an eye on things, myself and Alex Gomez, and give you more updates as we get them. Sarah, Patty, back to you guys. RJ, thank you. San Antonio fire crews, they had their hands full with several fires overnight. Here's a look at one of them. This one happened just before 1230 this morning at a home on Ruby Oaks. That's near Henderson Pass, not far from 281. Investigators say detached garage and two vehicles caught fire. Fortunately, no one was hurt. A few hours later, fire crews had to put out a separate garage fire on the city's north side. Flames were spotted on the 1000 block of Serenata Circle. That's near Warsbach and Blanco Road. The garage was damaged, but the fire did not spread to a nearby house or a neighbor's home. No injuries were reported. 
It's been described as one of the most dangerous roads in San Antonio, and now the city is getting some help from the U.S. government to improve Culebra Road. So the $8 million grant will be used for the stretch between General McMullen and Loop 410. John Paul Barajas looked into how the city plans to spend that money. There's between an estimated 50,000 drivers and 20,000 non-motorists who use Culebra Road every day. City traffic studies prove it's a busy thoroughfare, but some worry that's a dangerous combination. You've seen sirens and, and, and ambulances. You know that somebody has been injured on this street, you know, constantly hearing. I live two blocks away and you can just constantly hear the fire trucks. District 6 Councilwoman Melissa Cabello Haverda agrees. Glebeda Road is a large, large artery in San Antonio and it's terribly unsafe. 16 fatalities in the last several years and 600 very serious injuries. So that's a lot of San Antonians and we're trying to protect all our city. But she hopes an $8 million federal grant will help with that. The money from the Rebuilding American Infrastructure with Sustainability and Equity or RAISE grant program will be used to make improvements along Calabria Road from Loop 410 to General McMullen. We have an opportunity here to be bold and creative and not just repair a road, but reimagine it. Now the city wants to know what stakeholders, those who use Calabria, want to see. Veronica Salas lives nearby and already has some ideas. Flashing lights, just like school zones, you know, utilize these things to uh, make us safe, you know. People are getting hit literally every day. Cabello Haverda mentioned adding dedicated bike lanes and improving sidewalks as possibilities and future plans. Something Salas says would change her daily life. You had to cross this street. Yes. I was worried for you. <laughs> yes, yes. Is that something you do on a regular basis? I do, yes. And I do use the protected light and the signal. Um, unfortunately, the time on this uh, light right here, you have about 10 seconds to make it from one spot to another. So what's next? The councilwoman says community input meetings will be held before a construction timeline is set. But adds she's excited for the future. It's a big investment into Calabria, and so I think other organizations and their funding organizations, or even the state, might say, okay, well, we're, if we have this $8 million in federal funding, maybe we can offer some funds to leverage that to make it more impactful. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. All right, this is a story that's been trending and we've been following all night. I know my friends have been talking about it. I know it's all, all over social media. Four people are recovering after a shark attack at South Padre Island. Yeah, it's a big talker. Police believe it was the same shark. And this morning we're hearing from the family of a man who was bitten. I turned around, he wasn't there anymore. Riner Cardenas was swimming with his family on South Padre Island when his son-in-law was pulled under the water. I started swimming towards him, and then he jumped up out of the water saying, shark, 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 and that's when adrenaline kicked in. I went right, right after him. Cardenas tells us he carried him to the shore, people swarming to help. Cardenas' son-in-law was one of the two people bitten by a shark yesterday. That's according to game warden Captain Chris Dowdy. Officials believe all the bites came from that same shark, that shark is now further away from the shore. I came back to the to the beach and I saw everyone running towards this guy. And I went out there too and um, this guy was getting pulled out of the water with a big shark bike. Brian McDaniel from New Braunfels tells us he's been visiting South Padre Island for over a decade, but this was a first. It's not a real scene. It was like, how is this, how is this actually happening right now? Yeah. It, was, it, it was very surreal. South Padre Island Fire Chief Jim Pig tells us the attacks caught them by surprise as well. I've lived here for 24 years. Uh, the last time I saw anything like this was about eight years ago. He tells us the sharks are curious about what's around them and maybe near shore because of winds. These aren't really necessarily attacks. These are investigation bites, um, just seeing what's in the water. The water's it, it, it's been churned up because of the wind. They'll do an investigative bite. Uh, once they find out it's not a fish, they let go, but the damage has been done. Now that the shark is further out, he hopes to ease everyone's mind. We want to get back to that poll that we have going right now, and you can see it right there at the bottom of your screen. Now, if you had plans to go to the Texas Coastal Bend this weekend, does this make you think twice about your beach trip? You can vote right now by going to ksat.com slash poll, or you can scan the QR right there on your screen. I know when we go out, we have a designated shark watcher. I mean, Me and another mom, we sit there, we have our cold drinks, and we're just keeping an eye out.
And you have to because of rip current, lots of things can go wrong. But here are the results on your screen. 61% say yes, they do change their mind. 39% no. But here's the thing, Patty, if you had plans going to the Texas coast this weekend, may not be a good time anyways because of barrel. Justin's going to have updates on where it may make landfall the rip and, and the yeah. impacts that it could have as well. Yeah, very good. All right, 610 right now, 79 degrees out there. After the break, San Antonio is in the middle of a foster care crisis. What you can do to help in just a bit. And taking a live look outside with our live cam. Take a look, people are starting to wake up. The sun has not peaked out yet, but guess what? We have cooler weather coming up next week. Justin has that forecast coming up in a few minutes. Welcome back. The time right now, 613. This morning, San Antonio is in a fostering crisis. Thousands of kids are in need of a temporary home and fosters are in need of support. KSAT 12 producer Haley Powers breaks down the numbers and what an aging out of the system means for teens. Foster care can be a scary and confusing time for many children. They are taken away from their families and placed in homes with random people. This has become a reality for many children in Bear County and the surrounding counties. In San Antonio and the counties that touch it, there's over 3,000 kids in foster care every year. Jennifer Smith, the founder and executive director of South Texas Alliance for Orphans, breaks down that number. She says 3,318 children are in foster care right now. About 1,100 are with other family members. Another 1,100 are waiting for adoption. Over 600 are in other placements and 200 are in residential treatment. And just a little over 100 are in emergency shelters. When you look at the stats, you're like, this is our city. These are our kids. Like, how can we be letting this happen? How can we be okay with this? The solution is getting these kids into a home as soon as possible, but that isn't a simple task. Smith says the state has regulation requirements for people wanting to become foster parents. Those include 40 hours of classes, FBI fingerprinting, CPR and first aid training, home studies, and fire and health inspections. Smith says it's important for people to realize going through this process is rigorous, but vital to saving a child from a rough situation. When you're going into this, you're going into this to give your family to a child. This is not a space where you're getting a kid for your family. Giving your family to a child isn't always an option for some people, but there are other ways you can help. You can become a verified babysitter or child advocate who follows the child's case through the courts. You can also become a tutor and you can look into donating money or needed goods to churches. So not everyone needs to take a kid into their home, but we need everybody doing something. And that's really the heart of the Alliance is know what's going on, be upset about it enough to get out of your comfort zone and go do something. Smith says if you decide to foster, don't give up on that kid. Nationally, about 50% of families quit in the first year. Just remember, there are support groups like South Texas Alliance for Orphans, and you could be changing a kid's life. Haley Powers, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Haley. Another alarming stat involving kids in foster care. Once they turn 11 years old, they have under a 20% chance to find a home before aging out at 18. And once a child ages out, they tend to have bad life outcomes. For example, 76% of sex trafficking victims spent time in foster care. Same for 45% of the homeless population and 40% of kids who age out of foster care will end up in jail before they turn the age of 19. So you can read more about this foster crisis and how you can help by heading to our website, ksat.com. All right, let's get a look at the roads with RJ. RJ, how's it looking out there this morning? All right, guys, yeah, seeing a lot more people out and about during our 6 o'clock hour. I don't know if uh, maybe some people slept in a little bit more or we're maybe just were kept up by some uh, late night fireworks. I know uh, I was, uh, a lot of my neighbors, <laughs> popping them fireworks uh, from like midnight to around 2 a.m. So uh, things were certainly busy uh, south of the downtown area. As we take a look here, 90 Medio Creek, a couple of things to let you know about right now on 90. Uh, this is going to be eastbound. We have a stalled vehicle. It's going to be off to the side of the road, and you see that traffic is still moving along that area right there. So this is going to be right there in between uh, basically 410 and 1604 for our drivers on the uh, west side of town going on 90 east. A little bit closer to uh, the downtown area, we're going to have right here 90 at uh, basically a little bit before we get to South Callahan Road here, 90 and Hunt Lane basically. We have a uh, crash being reported in this area, and it looks like we have a few emergency officials off to the right-handed side of the road right there. So something we will continue to monitor as we make your way out during your six o'clock hour. Speaking of monitoring the roads, Alex Gomez, he is out and about for us and he was on 90 a little bit earlier. So let's go ahead and check back in with him and see how things are looking. Alex. 
RJ, good morning. I'm over here on the east side, RJ. Check out, I, I this is actually gonna be 410 South now. I just left I-10, so this is 410 South at Houston Street. So far, the east side's in pretty good shape, but I feel lucky, RJ. You know what, my neighborhood was pretty quiet last night. I maybe heard two pops of fireworks, and I got some good sleep. I hope you had a good 4th of July, RJ. All right, well, thank you very much, Alex, as we are back at the desk here. And uh, yeah, guys, certainly people got kept up a little bit late, but you know what? It seemed like everything was uh, pretty safe for the most part. Yeah, and it yeah. feels like sometimes the celebration continues into the weekend, so you might hear some more. Oh, I'm we sure. Know how pops and fire. <laughs> I know in my neighborhood they'll be celebrating at least through Saturday at 3 a.m. I think that's probably Keeping a me up. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It was uh, it was kind of loud last night, at least in spots. Uh, but uh, you know, the question is, will it get loud in the form of thunderstorms this weekend? We hope we could use some rain. Yep. There is a chance on Saturday, and I uh, just got an update from the Hurricane Center. Uh, as of 6:05, barrel made landfall there in the Yucatan, right near Tulum. Uh, they did report a gust of 81 miles per hour there. So uh, that storm is still packing a punch. Category two technically winds. Uh, still at 110 miles per hour. This is going to do some rapid weak weakening, though, as it continues to move over the Yucatan this afternoon. Uh, it'll take until tonight for it to sort of reemerge back out into the Gulf of Mexico. But that is the update that the Hurricane Center just put out. And uh, here are the wave heights. So we can actually go and look and see what some of the wave heights are. And they're quite significant around Cozumel, uh, which is what you would expect. It's always the right side of the storm, right? So this is where the water's getting pushed up. Uh, against the island of Cozumel, and there's probably some 20 foot swells showing up to 20 foot swells. There's going to be some coastal flooding from Tulum up to Cancun because of this system. Uh, so if you have friends or family that are traveling or are there, uh, that just know that that's uh, going to be a problem. And it just updated, so it looks like it's getting a little bit better. But uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Spaghetti plots. Uh, these are uh, something that we've been watching very closely. And one thing that we noticed overnight is there was a shift east with these. What does that mean? Well, I think because the storm uh, redeveloped a little bit further north, everything's kind of shifted somewhat. Uh, this means if it sets up like this, uh, that there is going to be a situation where there's a pretty uh, defined cutoff line with the rainfall. Uh, if, uh, perhaps, let's use I-35 for example. I don't know if that's going to be the line, but. Uh, it's going to be somewhere in that vicinity. East of that, we could get quite a bit of rain. West of that, we may not get much. San Antonio could be on that dividing line, but there's uh, still some time for this to change, and it will. Uh, but that's, that's kind of the uh, one change that we're seeing this morning. And the Hurricane Center has changed their track accordingly as well. Uh, by 1 a.m. tomorrow, this thing's back out in the Gulf. It'll take some time, but we think it redevelops into a hurricane, uh, potentially making landfall somewhere along the southern Texas coast. Now, if it does take that turn, it could stay out over the water a little bit longer and strengthen even more. That's also a possibility. And then depending on what path it takes, uh, it will be rain to parts of central Texas and east Texas. Here's what we're thinking rainfall wise, and I don't want to put specific numbers on here because it's going to change uh, each time we get an update and I, it, we just can't get into specifics yet. But I think the highest totals are going to be east of I-35 and then you'll have lower totals west. And again, there's going to be a pretty sharp dividing line between who gets good rain and who doesn't. Uh, but I do think we'll get some showers and storms tomorrow evening. There's about a 30% chance of that with this front. And then we'll watch for this system to start to move up the coast. And again, uh, perhaps bring us some rain here. 79 in San Antonio, 78 in New Braunfels, 79 in Converse. Here's a look at the rain chances. Highest Monday and Tuesday here locally in San Antonio. But we do have that chance also on Saturday. Extended forecast, 96 Saturday, 95 Sunday. Uh, then we'll get into those better chances of rain as we get some tropical moisture. Uh, and temperatures come down into the upper 80s both Monday and Tuesday. We'll be right back. Type 2 diabetes? Discover the Ozempic Trizone. Oh, 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 Ozempic. I got the power of three. I lowered my A1C, CV risk, and lost some weight. In studies, the majority of people reached an A1C under 7 and maintained it. I'm under 7. Ozempic lowers the risk of major cardiovascular events such as stroke, heart attack, or death in adults also with known heart disease. I'm lowering my risk. Adults lost up to 14 pounds. I lost some weight. Ozempic isn't for people with type 1 diabetes. Don't share needles or pens or reuse needles. Don't take Ozempic if you or your family ever had medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2 or if allergic to it. Stop Ozempic and get medical 
medical help right away if you get a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, or an allergic reaction. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Gallbladder problems may occur. Tell your provider about vision problems or changes. Taking Ozempic with a sulfonylurea or insulin may increase low blood sugar risk. Side effects like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea may lead to dehydration, which may worsen kidney problems. Living with type 2 diabetes? Ask about the power of three with Ozempic. Happening tonight, President Biden will meet with ABC News' George Stephanopoulos for his first interview since debate night last week. So their conversation will now air during prime time tonight. You can watch the ABC News exclusive interview at 7 p.m. right here on KSAT 12. Looking ahead to this weekend, four free river parades happening on the Riverwalk. We love a good parade here in San Antonio. And of course, we are military city USA. So the city salutes at sunset. We'll celebrate the men and women of all branches of the armed forces with river parades tonight, Saturday and Sunday. All parades start at 8 p.m. Of course, we have all those details. Head to our website, KSAT.com. Cooler weather to start that at night. Also on KSAT.com, the Fredericksburg Balloon and Peach Festival kicks off tomorrow evening. The Grape Town Vineyard and Farm event will feature a peach party, polo matches, grape stomping, wine tasting, and live music, followed by a hot air balloon ride. The event starts at 4 p.m. and goes until 8. Remember James and the Giant Peach when they, like, float off? And the peach, mm -hmm. that's what it reminded me of. Is that what you want to do this weekend? Yeah, just <laughs> load off in a giant peach. With a little wine. Yeah. Taking in the view. I love it. Time right now, 626, 79 degrees. Let's take a look outside with Alex Gomez out there on the roads for us this morning. Hey, I said, since he's not really busy, what up, Alex? Anyone honking at you? I was like, give him a little, like, friendly <laughs> honk, like a little beep beep. Let him know. Thanks for all you do out there, Alex. We'll be right back. This morning on GMSA, a story that has social media buzzing. Check, take a look at that screen right there. A scene straight out of the movie Jaws. Several people attacked by a shark on the Texas Gulf Coast. Take a look at the aftermath. And back here at home, we're taking a look outside with live cam. A little cloudy out there this Friday. Cooler weather is ahead, though. Good morning. It's 6.30 on July 5th, your Friday. I hope everyone had a good 4th of July. Yeah, uh, thank you for starting your morning with us. Thank you. We hope you're having some coffee, maybe a second round of coffee already. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a great day. Some donuts. Some donuts. Uh, you know, we just showed the video of the shark, and uh, you guys asked a good question earlier. Does it have to do with the barrel? Barrel. Yeah. It's a good question. Okay. I, I'm not a marine biologist, but in my opinion, I, I don't see that that has a lot of bearing on what would cause a shark to come a little bit closer to shore. One of the officials said mm -hmm. maybe because of the changing winds. I mean, but Possible. We're, we're seeing more shark attacks, I think maybe because of social media, sure. warming waters, lots of different possibilities. They, think, they live there. I think the warm waters have something to do with it, too. The, the yeah. oxygen, the amount of oxygen in water. I, I don't know. I, we're speculating. But anyway, I interesting. It's a good question. Uh, you know, we'll uh, do some more research on it and see what we find out. Uh, but we do know that if you're going down to the coast, uh, if you want to avoid the sharks, but also uh, avoid some of the higher surf that's going to be headed your way next few days, because once barrel gets into the Gulf of Mexico, it's going to kick up surf all along the Texas coast. 79 right now, 78 in New Braunfels, 79 in Converse, uh, mid-70s for Bernie and Kerrville. Our forecast today, uh, it's basically status quo. Yes, we'll get some clouds this morning. But they burn off for at 90 by noon time, and then we top out at 99. Feels like numbers will be up there around 103, probably. That's what we've seen the last couple of days. Barrel made landfall just a little while ago along the coast of the Yucatan, right around Tulum. It's still a Category 2 storm, although it will weaken here very soon. We'll get an update uh, coming up around 7 a.m., I believe. Uh, it, it will probably weaken uh, throughout the day before reemerging into the Gulf, and then that's where uh, we'll, I think, have a much better idea of what it's going to do for our forecast. Although, as I've been talking about, there's been some changes overnight, uh, some good, some bad, uh, when it comes to how it's going to affect our rainfall forecast. We're going to talk much more about that coming up. But now back over to RJ. We had, uh, what, one incident earlier still there? Yeah, a couple of uh, different things on 90. And uh, Justin, you know, I thought you were going to say I may not be a marine biologist, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn. <laughs> I should have. <laughs> I missed an opportunity there. 
All right, traffic. Uh, you know what? Um, it's things are looking okay right now. We had uh, about 30 minutes or so where we had a couple different incidents pop up, especially along US 90 right here at Medio Creek. As we take a look, we saw this stalled vehicle off to the right hand side, and I saw a hero truck out there in that area. So it looks like they may be getting some uh, help out there for those drivers, those folks that may be off to the side of the road there. But traffic is moving pretty good in that area. A little bit closer to the downtown area we're looking here. We still have a crash being reported. This is going to be nice eastbound right there at Leon Creek so right before you get to South Callahan and Highway 151 but again it's off to the side of the road the far right hand side so traffic is moving along pretty smooth on 90 right there at Leon Creek all right let's go ahead and check back in photojournalist Alex Gomez hitting the roads for us on this Friday morning happy Friday out there Alex how are things looking yeah happy Friday RJ I think as a city as a whole I think we're looking pretty good right now. We've had a lot of smaller incidents, but they're not really impacting drive times um, too much. So check out uh, just north of downtown, check out 281 northbound near St. Mary's. So I'm gonna make my way all the way up to the far north side to 1604 and see how traffic is looking over there, RJ. All right, happy sounds Friday. good. Yes, yes, happy Friday to you and happy Friday to everyone out and about this morning as we take one more look at our citywide map. And again, some activity there on 90 eastbound. And we also have a couple of stalled vehicles over 410 Broadway and 410 at San Pedro there as well. So we will continue to keep an eye on things and give you more updates as we get them. Patty, Sarah, back to you guys. RJ, thank you. Trending now, we want to get back to that poll we have going on right now. You can see at the bottom of your screen there. I just voted. So if okay. the question is, if you had plans to go to the Texas Coastal Bend this weekend, does the shark attack at South Padre Island make you think twice about your beach trip? You can go now to ksat.com slash poll, or you can scan the QR code right there on your screen to, to vote. So there are the results. 61% uh, say yes, they would change their plans. 39 percent say no they wouldn't change your plans i think if we go we're just gonna make sure the kids don't go all the way into yeah, the extra the careful beach. everyone all eyes all hands on deck when you're watching those kiddos out there as you always should though yeah exactly and as we said this comes as four beachgoers are attacked by a shark yesterday on south padre island Here's some of the newly released aerial video from Texas DPS showing that shark. And we were trying to guess what kind of shark this is. I don't know if there's an expert out there that's watching. You can see it there swimming through the water. All four people were likely attacked by this same shark. That is according to the Texas Game Warden Captain. Okay, so South Padre Island police say this all started around 11 yesterday morning. Police officers and fire crews treated the victims. Tonight, we know one man had a severe bite to the leg. At least one other person was bitten, one was grazed, and another was injured while trying to fend off the shark. As for the shark, the game warden captain says it went back into the open water. Right now, there are no plans to try and catch it. And a lot of people have been talking about this on social media. Here are some of the comments from Facebook. Uh, Brenda Walton wrote, no, definitely go to the beach. Love the sound of the waves. So peaceful, would I get in? That is a big no. And Carmen Cardenas also wrote on Facebook, most definitely you have to be crazy to get in the water, but that's not going to stop anybody. And again, taking a look at the poll we have going on this morning, the latest numbers have really been the same throughout the morning, but people definitely leaning towards the, yes, this is going to change my plans. Everyone just be safe out there. Hurricanes have a mind of their own, and the South Texas coast is still in the path of barrel. And on top of dealing with sharks, places like South Padre Island are already preparing for the storm. The Alec uh, gator sanctuary on the island is moving gators to the uh, so they don't get hurt or get out and hurt people. She started coming towards us. We we just came towards her. It's uh it's the rest of them, and especially once you catch the first one out out of a pond, they kind of catch on to what you're trying to do. And the gators were moved to Beaumont and will return to their sanctuary in South Padre after the storm clears. And as Beryl moves towards our coast, the Salvation Army is already preparing for any situation. Brad Mayhar with the Salvation Army here in San Antonio. San Antonio says San Antonio is going to play a role in their readiness plan. The Salvation Army of Texas is sending uh, an incident command team uh, down uh, to just be in San Antonio. They're going to station in San Antonio so that way they can monitor the situation and be a little closer to any 
potentially impacted areas in Texas. Of course, our case at Weather Authority will continue to track barrel today and of course throughout the weekend on GMSA. I know Justin and Mia, you guys are going live at what, 1 p.m.? One o'clock yep. on our stream to break everything down that they know about Beryl. Yeah, and it's changing a lot. I mean, even since he started talking about it, it's changing so much. It's definitely something we want to keep an eye on. Absolutely. Time right now, 638, 79 degrees. Speaking of Beryl, let's take a look outside with live cam 79 degrees at 638. We see those clouds. Justin says we do have a chance for rain tomorrow, not associated with Beryl. And some of that rain we might see from Barrel coming in Monday, Tuesday. He's going to break all of that down for us when we come back. Summer's here. That means it's a good time for a cold, refreshing drink. And I want to introduce you to Texas social media influencer Emily Hill with Texas Grocery Finds. Emily, you have a huge following on Instagram, and I know that there's a handful of people here at KSET that also know you. Welcome to our show. Thank you so much for having me. All right, you are always on the hunt for what's new, what's hot. Tell us about the yummy drinks that you found that we need to try. Yeah, I mean, we're all looking for something to cool down in this heat, right? Um, I am loving HEB has a new mango limeade. You can find this in produce and it's near the cranberry uh, lemonade and the cherry limeade that you may have seen before. It's really great. Could make a good mixer as well, if that's your thing. Um, I also really like Waterloo. They have a new, you know, Waterloo's an Austin, Texas brand, so local, and they have a new mocktail line. They have a rosé, they have a pina colada and a mojito. I love the rosé. It's a sparkling water. I think it actually tastes like rosé wine, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> All right. What about those folks that are a little looking for a little more fun that are of age? What are the drinks that you found? Yeah, so I Central Market has um, something I'm really into. They have the added some new um, cold press mixer options. There's a couple Texas brands and one called Simple Sips, and these are fresh juice. So it's a little bit of a splurge because they're a little more expensive as they're cold press. But if you're like, I want a nice cocktail and I want it to be easy and something I can make at home, I think this is the way to go. You can add your fresh juice and just like you shake it up with a little alcohol and it's beautiful. I'm loving these, so that's a cool option. All right, well, thank you so much, Emily, for your time and for helping us try something new. We're definitely gonna have all of these options to look out for this summer. Thank all you, right. Patty. Yeah. I'm willing to experiment and try all of those. Same. Let's get it going. All right. <laughs> RJ, hey. favorite drink? Yeah, no, weekend plans are set. There we go. <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I do like uh, trying out different uh, types of drinks, a little mixology here are and you there. A but, guy? Uh, you a seltzer guy? Uh, you know what? If it's hot outside, mm -hmm. if you're hanging out by yep. the pool or the lake, yeah, I definitely think uh, I usually like to stick to some of the, uh, like a good bourbon, things like that. But uh, no, I'm definitely uh, all in on some of that stuff there. It looks really good. Yes, as we said, uh, plans for the weekend here, getting ready to go, formulating. All right, let's take a look at our traffic here real quick. 90 eastbound Medio Creek. It looks like we're about to clear out uh, that incident out there for our drivers. And again, not causing any major delays. I think earlier when we checked in with Alex, that was sort of the the biggest thing that we were seeing was that uh, these drive times were not being affected whatsoever. I-10 right here, this is going to be east at Fresno Drive. We do have a stalled vehicle off to the side of the road there, but not causing, again, too much of a backup. So that's kind of the biggest thing. But of course, if you do see those hero trucks out there, make sure to give them enough time to operate and make sure that they clear some of these incidents. And that's the case right here, 90 east at Leon Creek, as we see that traffic is still moving along the area, but we've had a hero truck out there for a while uh, attending to an accident that was reported earlier. All right, let's go ahead and check in. Alex Gomez right now hanging out with us on a Friday morning. Alex, how are things looking out there? I know you were headed to the north side of town, so go ahead and give us an update on your whereabouts, my man. Okay. 
Okay, and it appears as if uh, we were not able to hear Alex during that uh, last traffic hit right there, but we know that he's been very busy as he makes his way through the city of San Antonio. And the one biggest thing, again, that he mentioned earlier, despite some of the incidents we're seeing, not seeing too many drive times being affected at the moment. So, uh, again, thank you very much to Alex for checking things out for us. Uh, it's been uh, pretty busy throughout this, this entire week. I love how I asked you if you were a seltzer guy. You're like, yeah, I like a good bourbon. I was like, ooh, bougie. I mean, we were not. Um, making fun of you behind no no not at all we good, know. Uh, good old fashioned you know can't go wrong with that but I, I mean you can't drink that stuff if you're hanging out out outdoors yeah I would definitely I'm not a fan of doing that I mean I'm, I'm no one to judge <laughs> I had a glass of Snoop Dogg wine last night so oh. <laughs> drink anything man okay. is it a holiday okay. run here? <laughs> I heard that's pretty good it's actually very affordable and huh? very good yeah. oh, I'll have to try that then I like the bottle design. The yeah, it's bottle. really cool, right? Yeah, you get it's to keep cool. It. Yeah. Did you yeah. keep the bottle? Of course. I'm not done with it. I'm still working on that. Oh, okay. It's definitely oh, yeah. a Friday around here. Yeah. Okay, let's be serious, though, because yes. we're talking barrel. Well, and I just I just got a new model run in, and I got to tell you guys, I'm getting a little discouraged here because we're starting to see this trend where barrel is going to take more of a turn to the north. This does a couple of things. It speeds it up, uh, which takes away some of the rainfall, and also places much of the rainfall east of San Antonio. I know we were all kind of getting excited about maybe a good, good downpour, good rain. I don't know if that's going to be the case. We got to wait and see here. We still got to wait till it's out over the Gulf of Mexico to get a really, really good idea, but I don't like the trends that I'm seeing. This also would allow for it to strengthen a little bit more, which could be uh, not such good news for places like Corpus Christi and the coastal bend. So these are all things we're going to watch. And if you heard earlier, me and I are going to be on at 1 o'clock today here on KSAP, but also streaming on our platforms talking about uh, Barrel's Path. And at that point, I do think we'll have a, a decent idea of what's going to take shape. As of right now, we're going to put in a 50% chance of rain on Monday and Tuesday to account for some of the tropical moisture. But no, this is also subject to change. That's how these tropical systems work. Uh, any little deviation, uh, we're talking even 50 miles here, makes a big difference. It really, truly does. And uh, we've seen this time and time again with these tropical systems. Uh, as we look at the spaghetti plots, they agree. They're trying to take this more north now, trying to get it to take that turn. And it's kind of like, a, uh, you know, when something gets slung around, uh, you know, like on a, a track or something like that, it's that force and it, you see it speed up. That's, I think, what we may see here. And notice they're kind of clustering between Brownsville and Corpus Christi. And so that's, that's potential. There are also some outliers here. And again, these spaghetti models also change. Uh, and again, once this reemerges into the Gulf, that's when things will, I think, get a little bit clearer. Right now, still a Category 2 storm. Expect this to weaken here in the coming hours as it stays out over land here on the Yucatan Peninsula. May landfall right around Tulum, by the way. Uh, yes, tropical storm later today as it reemerges in the Gulf. Uh, it starts to take that turn, and when it really starts to take that northerly turn, that's when uh, you'll see it kind of speed up a little bit. Uh, Brownsville still within the cone of uncertainty, so is Corpus Christi, and we think this restrengthens into a Category 1 storm. But again, I think there's also potential it could get a little bit stronger, at least briefly, if it stays out over the water and just kind of rides up along the coast. By Tuesday, San Antonio, still in the cone of uncertainty here uh, when it comes to what the Hurricane Center is thinking. But they did also adjust their track a little bit off to the east uh, because you're seeing what I'm seeing here. Uh, as far as uh, the forecast goes, futurecast, uh, taking the tropical weather out of the picture for a second, Saturday we'll get some showers and storms around here as a weak frontal boundary works in. And then Sunday I think is probably pretty quiet, at least here in San Antonio. But it's Monday when this moisture starts to work up. Uh, into the area, and I think east of San Antonio, there could be some pretty heavy rain. We'll see how far west those showers and uh, downpours make it. Uh, Monday into Tuesday, uh, again, our best odds at rain. Today, we'll be up around 99, heat index close to 103, uh, and there is a very, very small chance for a shower mainly north today, but 30% chance tomorrow, 95 Sunday. We're still going to keep 80s in the forecast Monday and Tuesday with that chance of rain. We'll be right back. Before we go this morning, we want to share some of the sights and sound from the 4th of July celebrations in and around San Antonio. Take a look.
We have thousands of people lined up here. Uh, there's close to maybe 7,000 uh, individuals uh, just enjoying the festivities. And then we'll probably have about 15,000 in the park uh, to see the fireworks display. Celebrate freedom, celebrate America, celebrate everybody who fought for us in order to be able to be here and be free. It is to honor America on her birthday and to pay tribute to all of the men and women and, and their families who have sacrificed so much for this country for 248 years now. Thank you for your service to this country and for all you've done and for all you still do. Always all day long, stay here in the hot burning sun just to enjoy <laughs> 30 minutes worth of fireworks. I actually love fireworks. <laughs> Yeah, you love to see that, uh, some of the patriotism we've been seeing out there. And of course, San Antonio Military City, USA. And we know we like to party and pop some fireworks out there. So some good news right here for our drivers, 90 Leon Creek. This was kind of the biggest thing that we were seeing throughout the morning, but we are clear, smooth sailing out there. 90 eastbound at Leon Creek. Let's go ahead and check back in with photojournalist Alex Gomez. Alex, how are things looking out there as people get ready for our seven o'clock hour? Well, the north side is quiet. In fact, it's so quiet that my microphone fell asleep. That's why you couldn't <laughs> hear me last time, RJ. <laughs> no, you know what? Seriously, I'm going down I-10 eastbound near Fredericksburg Road right now. So far, I had no issues on 1604. Uh, it's, been, it's been a great ride this morning. Have a good weekend, RJ. All right, same to you, Alex. And once again, thanks again for uh, checking out the roadways for us throughout the entire week. Things looking pretty good out there, Justin. Yes, and uh, we'll see those uh, clouds you saw just there on the camera clear out. It'll be around 99 this afternoon. 30% chance of rain tomorrow Look for some afternoon showers and storms. And then Monday and Tuesday are days we're going to focus in on barrel. Still some changes, I think, that could occur in the forecast. A lot of the heavy rain, uh, the trend starting to kind of shift it east away from San Antonio. Uh, so those, uh, those are all trends we're going to have to follow throughout the rest of today. And, of course, at 1 o'clock, me and I will be... Uh, looking at this further, a lot to look at, and I know a lot of people are uh, concerned and paying close attention to what's going to unfold with Barrel. Right, and I know a lot of people might have plans already to go down to the coast this weekend. Right. Maybe not a great time to go. Probably not, uh, even if you don't get a direct impact from the hurricane, the, the surf and all that's going to be really high. Thank you, Justin. Yep. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, RJ. Hey, we'll be back here at GMSA at 9. Good Morning America is next.